Hi, I'm Context Loss, a senior engineer on the game engine team at Roblox. So today I want to show you how to start localizing a Roblox game. If you haven't localized a game before, localization might seem like a big topic and you might not be sure where to start. But with the right tools, it can actually be really straightforward and providing the right tools is what we're all about here. So one of the biggest parts, but not the only part of localization is translation. So we've been spending a lot of time lately on our tools for translating games, trying to make them as powerful and easy to use as possible. And I want to give a quick demonstration of how you can use these tools to translate a Roblox game. So I've got a copy of the Roblox classic Natural Disaster Survival by Stickmaster Luke here, and I want to translate it into Spanish. So the first thing I'm going to do is click the Text Capture button in the Localization Tools section of the Plugins tab. And now that that's enabled, the Text Ripper will collect any text being displayed in GUI objects within the game so that I can translate it later. And now that that's started, I'm just going to hit play and play the game for a while. I want to try to get as many disaster and level names as I can, so I'm going to let this idle in the background for a while. I'm not going to make you watch that, so I'm just going to fast forward through that here. And that's probably enough. So I exit play mode. Toggle off the text scraper. And that has added this generated localization table object here in our localization service that contains all the text that are collected. So now I want to export this table. Our plugin has these buttons to import and export all my tables under localization service as CSVs to a folder. The other option worth knowing about is this right click save as CSV to export a single table. I'm going to use that for now. So now that I've exported this CSV file, I can hop over to Google Sheets and upload it here. And now we can see the spreadsheet with all the text that we saw in the game. There's a source column that contains all the source text entries. There's also this context column with the instance name that the text came from. The automatic replacement system uses this for disambiguation where the same string might be used in different places and require different translations. There's also a key column. If you want to use these translations in scripts, you can add a lookup key here. Now the reason I like to use Google Sheets for this demo is because I can use this Google Translate macro. So source from EN to ES, drawing on down. I have some quick first pass machine translations all in the text. So quick caution about machine translations. If your game is making any money, you probably want to pay someone for some proper translations or have a bilingual friend help you out. Machine translations are generally a little bit awkward and the, even the best literal word for word translation loses a lot of context. If you have better options, use them. If you put in the effort to get proper translations done, players do notice and they do appreciate it. This will get me started though. So I'm going to download this as a CSV. Switch back to Studio. And re-import this whichever way you prefer. No errors, so that imported successfully. So now that I've loaded these translations, I can click this button to set my play mode language to Spanish. Then I can hit play. And the game's in Spanish. The localization service is pulling those translations from that localization table and using them to automatically place the text that's being displayed. And if I publish this, this would be reflective of what any Spanish user would see when they played Luke's game here. So I'm biased, but I think this is pretty cool. But as cool as this is, I want to cover some limitations that these tools have. Obviously, if you have any text in an image, like on this sign here, we can't translate that for you. A better approach would be to use a background image and a GUI text object on top so it can be translated just like anything else. Also, if you're doing any kind of fancy rich text effects or text animations, the text scraper and the text replacement system won't work very well for you. You'll have to do that in scripts yourself. We have a lot of great Lua APIs for these things, though. So final note, there's more to localization than just translation. Localization means making your game feel native, and that goes beyond just translation. If you stop at throwing in some quick translations and think you're done, you can't expect automatic success. If you ever played a poorly localized game or watched a poorly subtitled anime, you know how this feels. It's a bit immersion breaking. If you want your localization efforts to really pay off, you will have to do the research and put some effort into it. We'll do everything we can to help though. We'll go into more detail on these topics in advanced articles on the developer portal. So we really hope you find these tools useful. You can find more detailed information on the developer portal, and for any questions or feedback, we're active on the dev forums.